Hello everyone, and in this video series, I will be using these digital printouts from Chapter 1 Papers on Etsy. This is their Victoriana collection. They have junk journal pages as well as seed packet kits. And if you check out my channel, you will see how I use different closures for the seed packets. And this is my putting together of a little journal to sell. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, and share. See you. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. This is Cindy with Moonfire Studios. I have a wonderful kit today that I'll be making a cute little journal with. This is the Victoriana journal collection, journal kit for chapter one papers. This is their second year anniversary for their Etsy shop. And they have some beautiful digitals. And these were special just for that. So there's journal pages, there's all kinds of cards and little sentiment things and there's a sheet of flowers and tags and there's butterflies and one of my favorite things that they always or like to do a lot of are the neat little seed packet envelopes and I have a playlist four little videos. They're all under around two minutes or less, so they're sped up, but they're different closures on the little seed packets that you can do, other than, you know, just doing a little circle in a circle and um, or just leaving them or with Velcro, so a couple cute ideas in there, I think. So if you'll hop over and check those out I would appreciate it and um, hop over and check out chapter one papers on Etsy and they have an Instagram account everything will be linked below and they would appreciate it and I would love for you to um, this will be available in the shop moonfirestudios.shop on the website and amongst a few other new goodies on there and I will be adding hopefully a lot more um, different variety of things as well and we'll see if we can get maybe some pop-up sales on Instagram too if you guys would like that which by the way I have just hit 500 plus subscribers or followers on Instagram so thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you very much thank you um, so I put a poll up there to see if you guys would like me to do a giveaway for that. So if you'll hit the like, subscribe, share, comment, um, anything and everything helps. So let's just get down to it. What I've done is I've printed them out and I've just taken a little um, tearing ruler and I've torn all four edges of the printed papers and I've done them double sided. And then I've got, I've picked three colors of standard paper, well, stationary type papers and I've only torn the sides of those. I've left the top and bottom straight because I wanted a little bit of separation and definition between the printed pages and the plain pages. So here we have a cream it has, I don't know if the camera is picking that up. It's very, very fine. There are, let me see if I move my light, if you can tell at all. Sometimes I can't see if it's there until I edit it. So I'll just move it around a little bit. 
but it has a very, very fine pale blue fleck in it. Um, it's very beautiful. And then this one is an, it's not a, it's a white, but it's a, almost an off-white. It's not a bright white, but it's not a cream. It's not quite an off-white, so it's just kind of white. Um, but this one has a linen finish to it. So, let's see if you can tell again. Again, I don't know when sometimes until I edit it. Um, but this one also has a watermark in it. I don't know if you can see that either. Anyway, <laughs> so there's that. And then this one is a really pretty blush pink color. I thought it was really nice and soft and it went with the pinks that they have um, in their pages. So there's a journaling page. And again, I printed them out as they are. So you could crop this and you could have two separate pages, but I chose to left my, leave mine as one. And then there's the back of that. And I repeated because I wanted some extra in there. And the little bouquets. And then, you know, this by itself would make a beautiful cover for a botanical book or just a happy journal. And again, here's those three pages, blank ones, and then a full page. And then this one I printed on thicker 80-pound um, cardstock because this is going to adhere to the inside of my cover. And my cover is, it was a large format. Um, handmade paper with natural fern leaf um, frond uh, inclusions in it. So I liked the very earthy feel of this. And it has wonderful texture. And it's thicker, um, so it doesn't need too much more stability, but I am going to adhere this piece on the inside. Now, normally, you guys see me, I ink all my edges, usually. Um, but in this case, I don't feel that it needs it. Um, I mean, I even, I have some of the white from the border around the pages still left on here. I chose not to tear in to that. Um, but I just, I found with these ones that, I mean, there's whites in here. They're not stark white, um, but I really liked the contrast of it this time. So I am not going to ink those. And I have a few ribbon pieces to use. And this one, since this matches the one that I used for the seed packets, I'm going to make this one my binding. And I'll get to that in a moment here, but the gist of it is I will put two holes and I will use this to thread through for the binding to match the seed packets. But I also have the same style of ribbon in this really pretty um, mauve color, um, but it matches all of these shades of these flowers in here. Um, so what I'm going to do is this will be my closure to the journal. And I'm doing a simple closure um, to where I'm just going to snip this in half. And before I adhere this down, I'm going to put a piece on this side and a piece on this side so that it will just simply tie closed like so. Um, 
I don't think that I want it to go around like this. Um, one, because I'm not sure if I'll have enough, because after I tend to decorate, I get a little bulky, so. so I'm not sure if that will be enough for someone to comfortably tie. Um, and I like it off the end for this one. So I'm going to put that, this will be in between there, like so. So I'm going to snip this in half before I forget. And for this, I am, you could use your Fabri-Tacs, um, you could use your red liner tape, you can use um, the Sizzix double-sided tape runner. Actually, the glue tape actually works extraordinarily well, but I've used all of that up, so I really want more. <laughs> hint, hint, hint to anyone who's happened to be watching. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to use my Xyron and I'm just going to back the whole thing with that and then stick it on and I will be right back okay guys I ran it through excuse my arm I have to reach across so I'm just making sure that the adhesive has a nice good bond and there's no air bubbles in it and um, trigger warning, I will be peeling this. So if you do not like the sound of things being peeled off, particularly plastic, um, mute me now. And then when you see it all gone, unmute me. Um, because I know a lot of people really love the sound of this coming off. So here we go. Three, two, one. Okay, good to go. So, figure out which way you want the top. And I want the big fern frond on the front. And I want this to sit, I like this way. And I'm just going to plop it as near the middle as possible. No. See, I almost forgot. Ha ha ha. <laughs> ha ha on me. <laughs> so you can take, this is just a center, centering ruler from the see-through ruler company. C hyphen T H R U. It's called Zero Hero Centering Ruler. I've had this forever, so I do not know if they still have it, but you can find, I'm sure, similar things. Um, so I am just going to roughly, because it's not exact, I'm going to roughly find. A center point and 
I'm using the Power Fuse Fabri-Tac for this um, so that the other Fabri-Tac doesn't ooze through. And I'm down towards the end. Whoops! And it came out really runny. So just take your hand, your finger, and just kind of pat it on there. Um, if you don't have something like that, you can also use the um, a collage medium. Um, Mod Podge will work also. Okay, and that's roughly it. Um, just make sure, since your paper, my paper is smaller than the cover, that it is in far enough. And I'm roughly about a pinky in. Pinky to the... Pinky to the middle knuckle there. So I'll try to be that way here. And for this side, I'm going to try to I'm going to put this here and then roughly line this up with one of these lines. I'm going to line it up with this one. About there. Okay. And since this is really fibrous, sometimes the double-sided tapes or adhesives, even the red liner tape, um, do not stick to it right away completely. So around the edges and just a little bit in between, I'm just going to put a little bit of wet glue. And it will help to, um, if you're not exactly in place, if you don't smoosh it down all the way, you have a tiny bit of wiggle room because of the wet glue. And also, it helps keep the adhesion with the dry glue because dry glues and adhesives do have a lifespan. And the wet glue has a much, much longer lifespan. And because this is handmade with so much texture and the delicate inclusions in it, I pat it, I don't rub it because you can rub out leaf pieces and you can rub it down and just make weird spots. So just pat that side. Now, for handling and things, it's not gonna, you know, it's not gonna be crappy. Um, I'll probably, it has, 
no coating on it right now, but it still has that leather-like feel to it. Um, I may put a collage medium over top of it just to help with waterproofing it also. Um, because this is, is printed with a laser printer, so the print itself is waterproof. I mean, the paper's not, obviously. But if you get, you know, a speckle on there and you blot it up real quick, it's not going to make ink run and stuff like that. So, it's helpful. And I have some vintage and antique fabrics and trims um, that I just kind of pulled out to see if I want to put any in there. I may use some, I may use them all, I may use none. And I found a stencil, a crafter's companion stencil that I quite like. It has these flowers on it and this little a big lattice section. So. I may use that with some texture paste. I'll think on that. I also have some vintage and antique um, French ephemera. These are from the antique textile shop on Instagram. Align has the most beautiful um, French letters and fabrics and all of these are from her all these beautiful trims um, and this floral fabric uh, but uh, if I could sit in the middle of her shop and roll around it I would gladly do so for probably the rest of my life <laughs> so I will link her below also you need to check her out I'm going to use, this one is from a jumbo ledger that I found in my local antique store. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to turn this into a pocket page. And I think I'm going to put that. Hmm. See, this is what happens when I do things on camera and I make you guys sit here and watch me <laughs> while I make up my mind. And this is upside down. <laughs> Always make sure your stuff is right side up three, four, five times before you stick it together. But make sure, unless you want it to go over your cover size, make sure it's not bigger than your cover. So I don't want it to be bigger than my cover this time. So I'm going to make it the same size as these, which are should be eight and eight. Yes, these are eight. I'm going to use my scoreboard. I'm going to measure from the top down because I want this to fold up to be my pocket. And eight inches right there. Yes, I know my scoreboard doesn't go out to eight inches, but I'm making a mark. I'm flipping it over. And that mark lines up pretty much on this six, six inch line. actually slightly in but that's all right I don't mind 
I can always shift it slightly. There. I think I want my pocket to be quite that high. So I'm going to fold it down a little bit. I think I shall put a pretty piece of trim down there. like that. I do believe what I'm going to do is, okay, I'm going to glue this flap down. going to do with this one is I really like how this part here looks though so I almost hate to cover it up but this looks kind of funny way down here so what I'm going to do with this guy is trim it off. I'm going to fold this before I put the ribbon on, that trim on. Just going to pinch it to find my center. I don't really have to measure all that. Now the other pages I will not be folding a center line in. I'm just going to be curving them. Um, this one I did this because I'm putting a ribbon piece in so I want to make sure I get the center part in there. Now do I want to make it a belly band or just another little pocket? Belly band's easier. But a tiny pocket would be super cute. And then you could decorate it at the bottom. Of course I did it. <laughs> I'm going to make it a tiny trim pocket. Okay, before I put this side all the way down, I'm just going to put some glue in the center area there. Now, ladies and gents, Resist the temptation to automatically fold it over. Do not do that. Why? Because your ribbon or trim or if you had another layer of paper on there would go pop and it would all go uh huh, and then it would look a right mess and then you'd have to fix it all and you know, I can do it if I want to if I'm really really careful but why chance it? And I have other things that I can do. The glue doesn't take too long to dry. So I'm just going to flip it upside down and make sure it's pressed in nicely. Okay, I'm going to set it aside to dry.